you're probably wasting hours in ChatGPT and Claude running the same manual loop over and over again. You start one chat to do research and find the facts, and then you take the facts and copy paste them into a brand new chat. And then you spend the next few minutes to hours going back and forth and iterating until you nudge it in the right direction. There must be a better way, right? Absolutely. There's a way for you to create your own AI assembly line of agents that go and do the work for you, doing drafting, researching, and even editing, coming back to you with the final result. And if you know the right steps to implement, then you can do this with zero technical background and zero coding at all, just using natural language to create agents that execute tasks for you. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that in something like Claude code. So if you watch till the end, then you'll be able to create your own mini AI workforce that can execute tasks for you. And more importantly, make you up to 10 times more productive. If that sounds interesting, then let's dive in. So if we hop into Claude code, I'm going to show you my workspace and show you exactly how this works. And more importantly, I'm going to walk you through how you can do it yourself and use a prompt I put together to make this as seamless as possible. A lot of people use agents in Claude code for development and writing code. And as someone who is a developer, I will use them sparingly depending on the task. But what I noticed is a lot of people are not talking about the fact that you can use the same firepower that you get in an editor like Claude code in combination with their sub agent feature to execute all kinds of normal language based tasks. So if we take a look right here, we have three agents. We have the research analyst, we have the creative copywriter, and finally the senior editor. And all of these are going to be used in this project, which in this case was meant to create a series of slides where you do the research for the topic, create the copy, the actual slide design, and come back with a series of assets. So instead of reading the prompt here, it doesn't look too easy on the eyes. We can go into something like Google Doc. And you'll see the presentation basically says, create content for a 25 slide presentation titled the state of AI quarter four 2025 for a non-technical business audience. And here we walk through exactly what the workflow should look like. And we specify exactly where each agent we created should be used. So for anything research related, obviously the research analyst is meant to look for the significant AI breakthroughs from the past year, look at current market trends and using surprising statistics. And it can use Claude Code's ability to also go and scour the web. Now you can supercharge this by adding even more things like MCP servers to make it that much more potent in its research ability, but you can use the vanilla out of the box. And then we have for content creation, the creative copywriter. And all of these are just a series of prompts. There's no code, there's no fancy UI you have to navigate. And in this case, it just focuses on creating the flow and structure of the copy that's gonna appear on the slides themselves. And the main goal of the senior editor agent is to make sure that your copy for your slides has ultimate clarity, maximum impact, and more importantly, make sure it actually lands for the target audience. And then for the output requirements, all we ask is for a final output of the slide content, the structure, and then I ask for this part here that's called ASCII art. And ASCII art is basically creating a mini diagram of positioning and visualizing what the text would look like on the slide. And you can go the next step further where you could ask it to draft a design of the layout of the slide if you're trying to get fancy with it. But the core deliverable are 25 slides formatted according to the specified structure ready for presentation. So if you go back into Claude code, you'll see the magic here where now all of our agents get spun up. And these are the ones that are already created ahead of time, which again, I'll show you right now. You have the research analyst, the creative copywriter and the senior editor. They're all invoked. And behind the scenes, they took around 10 minutes to go all execute their subtasks, then baton pass it to the next one. And what's cool is depending on the set of instructions that you give Claude code, you can make them go back and forth. You can do multiple passes between the research analyst and the creative copywriter. So you have a lot more granular control than a lot of these tools that look really fancy, but behind the scenes are very rigid in the way they allow you to create and use agentic structures. So you'll see here after the creative copywriter is done drafting the presentation and narrative, the senior editor gets to work, does a lot of the reading from the work that was done by the copywriter. And then basically this agent takes over until we get to the very end where it creates a series of final slides in a directory that's going to be right here. When we click on state of the art or state of AI rather presentation, you'll see all of the agent deliverables, including the final slides, and we can click on any one of them. So let's say data privacy, and we just zoom this in a little bit. It creates a really detailed markdown file that walks through what the title should be, example of on-screen text, speaker notes for you, 
the layout suggestions in terms of where things should be arranged, database for foundation, document law for compliance, handshake for consent. So you can make it go a lot deeper. And again, you could go the natural next step where you hook up something like an API or an MCP server to go and actually create this in something like the Gamma API that's good at creating AI slides. But the goal of this is just to show you what's possible to break any limiting beliefs if you're non-technical or technical, that you can use things like this for all kinds of use cases outside of just vibe coding. And one really cool thing that a lot of these tools like Claude AI and ChatGPT don't show you is all the rough work that goes into creating the final deliverable. So all the assets here are created. So the draft created by the copywriter, the research created by the research assistant, you can see exactly what they went through and what they looked through. Whereas on something like Claude, all you can usually see is some form of citation of where the draft was inspired by. So again, this is about giving you granular control. And now you might be looking at this, hopefully salivating and saying, this looks cool, looks very powerful, but unfortunately I absolutely hate working in a terminal. Do I have alternatives? You do. You can use something like Claudia, not affiliated, it's free. You can download it on your computer. It basically gives Claude code a front end where you can interact with it just like you would ChatGPT. You can click on agents, you can set them up here like in natural language. You can have a conversation, see multiple sessions that are running and have a lot of granular control as well as insight on being able to add MCPs, seeing usage in terms of how much you're using your API keys. You can see here, I'll be bankrupt shortly. But if you want an alternative where you can harness the same power, but you don't have to stare at this, then that's your alternative. So now that I've shown you what is possible, let's actually set up a few agents of our own. And let me show you the cheat code prompt that I put together that you'll be able to use by the end of this video to be able to spin up the definition and instructions that you can get started with. So right here in Cloud Code, all I have to do is do slash agents. And then when you click on enter, you'll see that I have a series of lingering agents. We have our best friends here, we just saw. And then we can just hover here with our arrow key, click on create new agent, and then you can choose either project or personal. If it's project, that means for this particular project in this folder, we'll have these agents assigned. If you select personal, then any agent that you set up will be accessible in any project from here on out. So in my case, I'll go to project. And what's cool is you don't have to necessarily even use my prompt to generate a starter prompt. You can use Claude to tell it in plain English what you're looking for, and it can spin up instructions of its own. And I'm naturally very lazy. So what I like to do is two options. One, you can go to this free website. It's called subagents.cc. And what it has is a series of prompts. If you click on view all, a series of different agent prompts optimized for cloud code. So if we go to something like the CEO quality controller agent and click on this card, it will show us this prompt that's really well put together that we can click on copy, paste it into a language model or a cloud AI or ChatGPT to have us better enhance it or use it and tailor it for our use case. In our case though, I already created this mega prompt and this is the cloud code assembly line prompt that will essentially allow you just at the very bottom right here to put an example of what you're trying to automate or what you're trying to create. So in our case, it was a slide deck. You could also say, I'm trying to create a content calendar for an upcoming workshop where I'm going to teach XYZ audience about this thing in AI. And once you fill it out here, then you'll be good to go. Now for the rest of the prompt, obviously I won't go through it in depth, but basically just says you must generate the output in the following two part structure. Number one is the title of the agent, the description of the agent, the agent's rules, when it should be referred to, but wait, there's more. After it actually comes out with all those assets, it's useful to also have your first starter prompt. So notice when we first started the video, I walked through my instructions to create that slide deck, basically calling on the agents like Santa would call on reindeer saying Blitzen, you do this, and then Rudolph, you do that. We do the exact same thing with this starter prompt. So I will just copy this as is, and you can go to any language model of choice. In this case, I'm just going to use Gemini. I'm going to paste it in, and then I'm going to basically replace this insert your own task. And we'll just say something like, I want to be able to create a content calendar for a three day workshop where I am teaching people in the real estate industry, how to properly leverage practical AI. Okay. So then I will let that fly and then we'll send that over and look at this. We have a series of agents. It came up with, it decided that we have one, two, I think, yeah, two agents here, as well as an instruction prompt that we can execute with. So I can take this real estate strategist 
copy it over. We can paste it into Claude code right here and then it asks for the system prompt. And then lucky for us, we have this prompt already waiting for us, ready to copy paste. Obviously go through it, make sure it meets your requirements, what you're looking for, maybe take it into a Google doc or a sheet before you actually paste it. But let's assume we're happy with it. We'll take it, copy paste right here. We'll click on enter. And then it just asks us, when should this agent be invoked? And this is really important because it gives Claude code the framework or the mind map of knowing which employee to invoke for which task. So in this case, I already got you covered. So we have the description here, use this agent to identify high impact practical AI use cases. And then it walks through an example. You can add this example as well to context. I think usually that just a normal sentence suffices. So I will paste this in and then you can tell it, I want it to be attached to no tools, these tools, these MCP tools. And this is really where you can make things a lot more potent and make them really powerful. But for now, we're going to stick to the basics of just clicking on continue. And then you basically tell it which model it should use. Now I will recommend, especially if you don't want to spend $200 on a max plan, don't use Opus. Ideally use Sonnet or you can select this thing that's called inherit from parent. Meaning if you in your session decide to choose Opus, then it will use Opus. If you use Sonnet, then you use Sonnet. So up to you, which one you choose. Haiku I find not as intelligent as you need it to be. So I would just do inherit from parent and then you can pick up color for it. And this will tell you and denote when this agent's actually working. So we'll click on purple. Okay. And then we'll click on enter and then we'll click on create new agent one more time. We'll do project and then manual configuration. Then we can go back, paste the exact same thing. So in this case down below, we have the instructional designer. We'll copy that over right here. We'll take the system prompt and you can see how buttery this process is if you have the right prompt to lead you on. And then we take the description. Boom. Okay. Paste that in and now I'll click on continue inherit from parent. And then let's do blue. And then when we click on enter and click on escape, okay, we'll be ready to go. So we have this prompt right below and it walks through an example request where you basically tell it when to invoke the agents, even though it has its own reference material. But I just find that by compounding those instructions and giving it more of a nudge, it does a better job of using them at the right time. So we'll click on copy. And then you can see right here, agent changes. We now have two brand new agents. We'll paste the set of instructions. There we go. And then we'll paste it on. I'm not going to actually have this run. This will probably take anywhere from five to 20 minutes, depending on the task, but the assets will look very similar to what you saw before. And you can see right here, right away, the real estate AI strategist is on the case. And the beauty of using agents in Claude code is that each one technically gets a blank slate of context window where it's focused on that particular task and it's not really muddied by everything that happened before it's invoked. So that's a very useful tip to use. So hopefully this breaks a bunch of limiting beliefs that whether you're technical or non-technical, there is a lot of firepower on the other side of being able to use these tools to do day-to-day -to -day tasks that would otherwise take you hours or multiple chain prompt steps in something like ChatGPT. And with that, if you enjoyed this and this was helpful for you, I'm gonna make the first prompt I showed you available in the second link in the description below. And if you love content like this and you wanna go even harder and really see what you can do with cloud code, like connecting MCP servers, building full web apps, doing even more procedural tasks, automating custom GPTs and anything like custom GPTs, then not only do I have a series of other agent prompts in my exclusive community, but I also have a whole series that I've built that I'm about to finish around 20 different modules from going from zero to hero using this technology, even if you're not technical, to become that much more productive. I'll see you in the next one.